Unfortunately, we didn't find him under the bridge. We took a walk down to the river to see if we can spot him. We asked some people a couple of questions if they've seen him. There's been a lot of cases open where these ladies have been tied up, raped, and even sometimes murdered. On my way, on my way, on my way. Okay, we've just had a call now. There's a guy trying to break into the bottle store. We were responding to a, a silent alarm at one of the shopping centers we protect. A silent alarm is an alarm system that sends the signal directly to the control room without making an alarm sound. I'm here now, let me see here. There we go, got sighting of him, got sighting of him. Hey. This perpetrator tried to get into the bottle store at the shopping center. Unlucky for him, you know, we were just around the corner because our offices are basically just up the road. Let me go! Stop resisting! What are you doing, bro? Let me go! Stop resisting! Uh, the guy looked like he was pretty high. He was foaming at the mouth. His pupils were dilated. Fuck you! It was pretty easy to take him down, but once they had him, he did prove to be quite feisty. He was obviously all popped up and energized by whatever he was taking. Stop resisting! F you! Let me go! And we get a lot of situations where people have been out, or we get these guys in the area that drink a lot, take a lot of drugs, and you know, when these shopping centers close and when all the bars and pubs are closed, they don't have a place to get a drink. Just checking for weapons. Have you got any weapons on you? F you, fake. <laughs> Had it not been for the silent alarm, the suspect would have heard the alarm and he would have fled. By the time we came down there a few seconds later, he would have already been gone and all we would have been left with was the broken locks. From here, we're going to go pre process him at the station. Um, we didn't catch him inside the shop. But still, we've got a charge of trespass against him. This guy's gonna do some jail time. A normal morning at my house is pretty chaotic. Uh, I'm trying to get the kids ready, get them dressed for school. Uh, Gabriella's always the difficult one, she doesn't like to wake up, you're not allowed to open her curtains. Yeah. Whose jersey is this? Gabsy. This is your jersey. No. No. Gabsy's jersey. Wanna put it on? No. It's cold out. Yeah, no. no. John Anthony's a bit more disciplined, he wakes up, gets ready, gets downstairs, starts having his breakfast. Gabriella goes downstairs afterwards, starts a fight with him. Do you have to take his jersey when you go to school? No, but he's got to look good, he's got to learn to look good. It wasn't a typical morning. We first had to stop off at the vet and then get the kids to school. How's things going at school? Good. Um, I'm doing tests on spelling, my letters, my maths. Are you better at maths or are you better at spelling? I think I'm better at spelling. Gabs, what are you doing at school, baby? We are doing painting. Love your school shoes. This is my dangerous security dog. Hey. 
Uh, on this particular morning, we had to take the the dog to the vet. Um, that's John Anthony's dog. He got it when he was a baby, and uh, she ran next door to the building site and got blackjacks all over. So she had to go to the vet to get clipped. Gabby, are you strapped in, baby? Yeah, I'm strapped in. And I only want to hear one click, huh? When can you get some food? Do you want to go past McDonald's? Yes, please. No, I, I want to go to one piece. Dad, please, get me some food. <laughs> what do you guys want? Just nuggets? Nuggets and cheeseburger. Okay. With no pickles, Dad. No pickles. Do you guys worry about me when I go out and I don't come home till late? Yes. Why? I don't want you to die. Oh, buddy. Superheroes can't die. They have superpowers. Of course I've got superpowers. You saw those magic tricks I can do? Um, the only magic daddy has is his gun. With more than 25% unemployment in South Africa uh, and illegal immigrants jumping the borders, getting into this country, looking for greener pastures, this creates a lot of um, crime, begging, homeless people, should we say hobos on the street. And these guys, if they live on the street and they don't find food or money or people don't donate food or money to them, their last resort is crime. So, in effect, we get to know these hobos, we try and keep them safe, we try and find them better shelter. On this specific day, we came to check our friend under the bridge. We got intel from the, the, the workers handing out pamphlets and, and selling things at the robots that there'd been, been a massive fight under the bridge, there'd been arguments. Normally what happens is these hobos, these beggars, they fight for begging rights. They'll actually stab each other to death to have a, a specific spot on a highway or a specific spot at a robot that generates enough income. Unfortunately, we didn't find them under the bridge. We took a walk down to the river to see if we could spot them. We asked the people a couple of questions if they've seen them. I can guarantee you there's homeless guys there. We can go down there into the bush there. Okay. Yeah. Watch out for human feces, please. <laughs> we don't want you chundering on us. We see this guy all the time under the bridge. He's a, he's a nice guy. We don't think he steals anything. He just asks for food and stuff. Hello, guys. What are you guys doing here? It's quite clear that I can see you eating, but what are you doing here? We love what these guys do for the environment, recycling all the plastics, cardboards and papers. But you know, the problem comes in that with all the good they do, there are some rotten eggs in the batch. And you guys, you don't have dacha on you or anything, eh? Okay, we're gonna search all the guys here, okay? We searched all of these guys hoping that we'd find evidence on, on some of them or some of them would start talking and blame other guys for the assault on this guy and maybe give us some clues on the whereabouts of this guy. We're looking for that guy that's sleeping under the bridge. We got information that someone beat him up or there's some report of some violence of drinking. No information. The, the guy that sleeps under the bridge there. Bridge, bridge. There. The highway. Yeah. 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 No, under the highway. You just stay That's there. our home. The people that are drinking and smoking dakhe, yeah, it's not permitted, you understand me? So I need all of the guys here to be searched because we're searching for dakhe and weapons, you understand? 
right. So stand in the line, let the guys search you, please. The people that we found there on the open land by the river and next to the highway. So they go to all the complexes and stuff when it's rubbish day and everyone's got their bins out and they actually clean the rubbish and take all the plastics out of the rubbish. So they haul the rubbish back to that open land and then they sort it and then they go through to the the scrapyard and then they get paid I think per kg or per ton or whatever for the plastic. So it's actually it's quite good for the environment and stuff because they're recycling but it's also it looks a mess. Guys, I was like, have you seen that guy that lives under the bridge here? You haven't seen him. Sharp. It's a terrible situation we find ourselves in. You know, we've we've got to know this guy for the last couple of years. He really hasn't been involved in anything terrible. So what we we need to do is just carry on the search. Yo, we've got a client that stays on a well, quite a big plot and it actually borders onto the squatter camp nearby. So, I mean, this lady stays by herself. She's a nervous wreck. She's got two dogs with her. She's constantly hitting her panic button. But we don't mind because rather be safe than sorry. Being a single lady staying on a farm in South Africa is very dangerous. There's been a lot of cases open where these ladies have been tied up, raped, and even sometimes murdered. Hey Mark, hey Mark, come in. Bentley, Bentley, come in. Mark, take a bike. Got your back, right behind you. She saw someone running through the garden and next to her daughter is a, basically an abandoned house uh, where nobody stays. She gave us a call to come and have a look what was going on. Man, Mad Mully, Mad Mully, come in. Hey Mark, take a bike. Hi, it's Trevor here from Nightcard Security. We've come just to come look at the perimeter. Hey guys, listen, there's been a report. There's three suspects. They said one suspect is armed. Let's be careful, let's move together. Uli, I want, I, want, I want you and Klaus to break left. We're going to break right. Guarding these specific uh, ladies and, and, and these properties such as this, it does get a bit irritating at times. But it's kind of like the old story, the boy that cried wolf. You know, when the wolf finally came, no one responded and he got eaten. With us, the day we don't respond, these ladies get murdered. So we have to take the good with the bad and respond to every call and make sure we respond in time and make sure we do our best. Um, okay, we've got to go through this gate. As we go through the gate, uh, listen, I think we need, we need to actually all of us go left and work the property from left to right. I don't want any surprises. Just now the guy runs between us, fires shots and then we shoot each other. Leave the, leave the dog outside, the dog will, the dog will bark and it will, it will alert the criminals. It's quite risky trying to infiltrate a house through a property with a torch in it because the criminals can be in the dark and they just shoot towards the light. But it's our job, we have to do that, we've got bulletproofs on, we can't go into a scene blinded. We didn't find any suspects, but I just had that gut feeling that someone was there. So normally, whenever I get a gut feeling, I always have to go with my gut. I'll go in first, you guys can, you guys can cover that. Thank you. 
the only hope we got with coming into the house with torches and that is that we actually blind the guy and he sees number of torches shining so he actually doesn't know where to shoot I mean it's you don't know if you're gonna get a bullet into your bulletproof vest because you've got the torch you've got your gun holding the torch like it you don't know if it's gonna come straight at you and nail you camera crew I think you should cut the lights I don't want you guys to become a target okay guys ready Clear, clear. Move left, move left, move left. Cross, cover, clear, clear, cover, clear. 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 In the house or no one on the property so i said to my brother i said listen you guys gotta go outside again start left and we'll start right Before I knew it, Muli was on the other side of the house and he was radioing me saying that he had found someone in the main bedroom. Did you say main bedroom? Did you say main bedroom? Main bedroom. Main bedroom. Still standing there. Don't move. Don't move. I mean, it was quite scary how this guy actually wedged himself into a small place up there. That's why we couldn't find him. And lucky I spotted him. I put my gun on him. He put his hands up and lucky Zane came straight in. Do you have any other weapons? Do you have any other weapons on you? What are you doing here? How many guys are you with? You're trespassing, my man. Where's your friends? No, I'm not with the friends. You're lying. Where are they? Where are the other guys? Okay, come up. I think they're friends. We got the suspect. We got the suspect. We're moving out. Meet us on the courtyard. Meet us on the courtyard. We're still in a dangerous situation. The report was three of them. I'm gonna go out first, I'm gonna cover you. So walk out with the suspect. Or so I'm out. Camera, I want you guys to switch your lights off, please. Bravo team, bravo team. Uh, the report was that there was three suspects in the in the premises. We've got one. Let's be careful, there's still two outstanding suspects. Are you sure? Yeah, I've checked the roof, there's nothing else here. All clear, bring them out. Alright, cool. Where's your friends? Did they go already? We know there was three people here. Did they go already? No matter what this oak was telling us, trying to save his buddies, we knew exactly that there was more than one guy. Okay. Don't try to escape, but don't try to look. On questioning the suspect, we asked him how he got access into the premises with the electric fence all the way around. Um, he showed us a spot in the corner where me and Emil could clearly see that the guys had come over there and have been coming over there. 10-4. Check it. Do you found the other two suspects? We found the exit point, we found the exit point. See what happens here? He's, uh, on the way out, these guys were obviously in a hurry, they're grabbing for branches, and these branches just snapped off. Um, but as you can you quite, quite clearly see, you can put your foot here, you're on here, and you're over this, you're over this fence. These guys are extremely agile and extremely fast, so they get over here in a matter of seconds. When they came in, all they did was they climbed up this fence, you can see where the fence is bent there. They stood on the fence, they stood on that pole, and they jumped over here. One foot on there, one foot on the top of that pole, they come over without even touching the electric fence. I think we better find the client and recommend that they, they fix this corner. Yeah. yeah. Tango coming for Zulu 1, Tango. Coming to Zulu. Uh, we're making our way back to the vehicle. We found uh, the entry and exit point. The other two suspects have fled the scene. We'll have to plan an operation for another night. 
What we're going to do is we're going to take the suspect back to the station, we're going to question him, we're going to try and get information where his other two colleagues are, um, try and make a arrest in the township. They normally have a meet-up spot where they meet up if they do get a, um, separated in their operation. So uh, we're going to question this guy and get answers tonight. Yeah, today uh, I, work, I was working with my colleague Trevor. We are, we are awesome together. So I see your eyes are red. What happened last night? Are you crying? Dave, if you knew what I did last night, you would be. <laughs> Dave the muscle, it's, it's actually quite good working with him. We get along well. We always talk about girls and stuff, so it's, it's nice to just chat with them. We get, we get along great. Nice. My girlfriend broke up with me, so it's not a, not a great day for me, bro. Oh, ah, sorry, man. Because you know I don't drink during the week. <laughs> so, you, so you were crying? Oh, baby! Oh, baby! <laughs> Please come back to me! Eh? <laughs> don't, don't ever pull that face again. Well, I so, said, no, this guy, Seems like you were crying, and even your voice is not okay today. It doesn't sound okay. I think this guy was crying since he broke up his cheek. Every time, that's his story. He's gonna tell me that he broke up his cheek. <laughs> oh. But anyway, it's part of life. Yeah, it's part of life, bro. Uh, you know, TDJ says, oh, let it go. Let it if go. If someone walks away from your life, let them go. You know this guy is a heartbreak kid. I ah, mean, you know, man, last night uh, my mission was impossible, man. Mission you know, impossible? Yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, this lady, man, I, I, I called her, no, baby, I'm coming up for you. And said, no, come. When I get there, she's not there. I take a lot of pointers from David uh, on Jimmy, but when it comes to the girls, they must come to me. <laughs> she did stress. Y imagine, bro. She gave you back, I was, bro. I was hot for the whole night. <laughs> As we were driving ar along the area, patrolling, uh, we, we came across the guy who was, who was looking like he was tampering with the electricity box. Chave. Check, yeah. This guy, I don't know if he's fixing this box. Okay. Go ask right. him there. Okay. Okay. And then we stopped and then I approached him. I don't know if this guy's fixing the box or what. Wait, Dave, wait. just check what just he's wait. doing there, bro. So, man, Kukunjan. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, man. And then, so, so we say, Vuluya, so now we're in Zanu, at Katelel. And then, then, now we're in Zagalan, now we're seven, now we're in Zanu. We're totally safe, Vuluya, so now we're at Katelel, or what's happening? So, so what was this? Yeah. Come on, okay. As soon as you ask what he's doing with the screwdriver, the guy fled. So that's, I, I didn't know what was happening. I just, it was a bit of a shock to me. So I'm like, oh, oh fuck. Oh, God, I lost him. Where did he go in the bushes? There's he there. Chase. This guy's moving the power box, yeah? So we thought, I uh, initially thought he was fixing it, so I asked David, David got out and went to go chat to him. They see he just bolted. I tried to like come around on the other side of the fault, and then it actually worked out pretty well. David chased him all the, all the way to my, where we, where we are actually climbing out the car. Hey, stop! Stop, stop, stop! stop. stop. I came running after him, that guy, and then Trevor. As he saw Trevor, he tried to change the direction. Oh. Uh, All right, Dave. Hold him, Trevor. Dave. Uh, he just gave me a sneaky and weak punch, you know. Why are you doing, brother? Oh, his punch was still soft, soft one. Why did you eat my friend? No, I didn't eat it. I didn't eat it. Dave, 
I really wasn't prepared for today. I was actually in my sales kit. I was in my square toes and stuff, so I wasn't even in my combat gear with my boots and stuff. Yeah. What are you doing there by the power box? Come on, man. Why you hit me now? Have you sort that yeah. out? Bro? People like you. People like you, my man. People like you, my man. You don't end anyway. You understand? Yeah, yeah he's got a screwdriver, yeah. But anyway, you know, we always win. We always win when we are on duty. Otherwise, JP is gonna, ha, ah, he's gonna fight. We never have to lose the suspect. You left some cable there yesterday. Relax. If you do that again, I'll break your neck. Damn. Anyone? One of our clients phoned us and told us that there's a bunch of guys and girls making noise, playing music, drinking. I think there's some fornicating going on. 10-4, uh, let's make our way there. Guys, what's your 10? What's your 10? Ten four. Uh, we're putting up to the, the scene on the right here. Just be careful. These guys look like they're partying and they might have weapons. The problem dealing with intoxicated people is that they always believe that they're right and they always believe that we can do nothing and we are nothing. You know, they once they're drunk, they kind of put on their, their brandy shirt or their, their bravery cap and they, they want to be, believe that they're tough guys and they act big and strong in front of the woman. I went to the back and I took the alcohol from the boot. As soon as I did that, everyone approached me. They, t they ripped the, the booze out my hand and I just had the empty clip drift bottle. I don't know why they went after that. <laughs> Women tend to think that uh, they can't get hurt by a guy and stuff like that. We'll just stand back while they do stuff. But as soon as she broke the bottle and she threatened Zane's life, he had to take immediate action and tase her. Oh, 
At the end of the day, the point was not to arrest them. It was not to make trouble or to, to hurt anyone. Um, so we landed up playing a bit of a, a good cop, bad cop role um, between myself and Zane. Unfortunately tonight you only got two choices. One, you calm down and we let you go. Or two, you go to the police station. Fortunately my boss is a hard ass. And once we start going there, there's no turning back. That decision needs to be made now. We probably would have let them go anyway, but uh, the point was to quell the situation and get the guys to move. Zulu 1, Zulu 1, coming for class. Uh, these guys have calmed down nicely. Uh, Says to me they want to go home, so... Oh, please, oh, please, man. I think they've learned their lesson. I'm going to let them go. So, you know, the guys said they were sorry and we uncuffed them and we let them go. And, we said, and I explained to them, I said, listen, guys, we're not here to fight you. We're actually here to protect you. We're sending you home for your own safety. You know, when you're standing in the parking lot drinking, they're also susceptible to criminals attacking them in the parking lot. Uh, they're sitting ducks, they're standing in the middle of nowhere, they can get hijacked, they can get murdered. Those girls can get raped. Uh, thanks, man. Sorry about all the trouble, gents. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Thanks for letting us go, man. Thanks a lot. Man. Sorry, man. Yeah, sure. Go, my resident. They said that they've seen this car a few times in the park. So we're gonna go check it out. We know there's been a couple of drug dealings happening. So we're not too sure exactly what to expect, but we'll see shortly. Okay, I can see the car also. Okay, Jerry, just, Jerry, just show the lights a little bit on them, then just switch off your car. Okay, sweet, that's fine. You can stop right here. Yeah? Stop here. Yeah. yeah, switch off. Turn your lights off. I can't see any movement in there. Do you think no, they maybe no. parked the car and went for a walk or, or something? Come, let's go check it out quickly. Come. Just remember, let's take it with caution, eh, Trev? Yeah. Just remember now, you'll never know what's in here, Trevi. Just be careful, like. Eh? There's definitely movement there, bro. No, there's people in the back. Oh, you won't believe it. There's two people there. <laughs> Bastard. It's all good, bro. How's it, guys? Hey, you're getting it on there, but, huh? What's happening there, guys? We've got a complaint of drugs in the park here. What's going on? You're just confuffling, yeah? Yeah, I'm just about to. Sorry, guys. Guys, let's be careful, yeah? We've got a few complaints in there that you guys are dealing in drugs and that. But we don't have to come. We don't have to come. I can just see that you and the lady are getting it on in that. Well, just be careful in this area, the crime's bad and that you can't bring your lady in the park here because you'll come get hijacked. Okay. Yeah, be careful, bro. Yeah, no just problem. do up your pants. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> That's blind, eh?
Guarantee that's a little chick from his office that he brought you just to give a quick shamba that he's going to drop off and go home. See how awkward he was. She was bad in your sweating. Did she have sweating there? <laughs> and his pants are down and everything. That's funny. Guarantee that it's an actual situation. This is... I always miss this <laughs> The all the crap stuff that happens, bro. What's the crap stuff? Run there, no, I don't want to see the pooper. I want to see the, the pumper stuff. <laughs> you know, we'll come to Ellie, bro. Quick reaction, right. quick response. I haven't seen the t We should have just come up to them slowly, like as I just stood there watching them and not checked us. She should have gone in with the torches. <laughs> she just snuck up on them. <laughs> watch over, like. Fuck, that is too funny. Hopping in the pump here, It's Gabriella's fourth birthday and it's a very special day. It's her princess party today. She is the princess of the house. She acts like the princess, so it was only fitting that she had a princess party complete with the princess dress and the princess cake and princess jumping castles. Oh, let's, let's, let's take a picture. Oh, that's the um, everybody was there. Um, we Firstly, we had our immediate family over there. Um, Klaus, Jackie's brother, my, my brother-in-law, he was there helping, putting up decorations. My brothers came with the families, obviously Zayn and Muli and the, um, the grandparents. And then later on, joined by the rest of the cousins and the school friends. That's just a nice dress. It's great to have a support structure from such a loving and caring family with lots of cousins and friends and family. The weekends are very special. My dad is still the head of the family. Um, he gets on like a house on fire with the, with the grandkids. Uh, they're his favorite and uh, he's their favorite. I think the kids kind of understand uh, who the real boss is and uh, that would be my dad. Happy Hey, hey, hey.